Okay, so I want to show you kind of the setup that we have going on here, um, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do first. So here I have a crucible and lid, okay, and that's what I'm going to do my reaction in today. And then it is resting in a clay triangle, which is resting on a ring clamp, which is then on the ring stand. I then have a Bunsen burner that I'm gonna light here in just a minute using my striker, okay? So the first step of this experiment is to heat the crucible for about five minutes using the Bunsen burner to burn off any impurities because we want the crucible to be nice and clean. I washed it out, I dried it out really good, but then we wanna heat it <clears throat> to get any residual water or any oils for my fingers off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and light the Bunsen burner and heat this for five minutes, and then I'll get back with you. The next thing I need to do is to handle my magnesium ribbon. Now, if you look at my magnesium ribbon, you can see it's got like this black oxidation on it, and we don't want that. We want this magnesium ribbon to be nice and bright and shiny with no impurities on it so that when we react it. We know we're just reacting the magnesium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper and I'm going to kind of sand off some of these outside impurities and make sure that this is nice and clean. Then I'm going to cut my magnesium ribbon into little tiny pieces. Okay, so I have heated my crucible up and gotten it all nice and clean and sterilized. Okay, I've placed it on the balance. And the mass that we're getting as the mass of the crucible and lid is 32.48 grams. So go ahead and record that in your data table. Next, I'm gonna take my little strips of magnesium. I polish them with some sandpaper and then I cut them into little tiny pieces. Like this. I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna put them into my crucible. And so the mass of my magnesium is 32, I'm sorry, the crucible lid and the magnesium strips is 32.76 grams. So for line three, the mass of my magnesium, I'm gonna do 32.76 minus 32.48. We have a mass of 0 0.28 grams of magnesium. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to put my crucible and lid back onto the clay triangle and I'm going to heat this until it fully reacts. Okay, now I don't want to touch it because I don't want the oils on my hands getting on the crucible. So I'm going to use a pair of crucible tongs to very carefully lift and place the crucible into the clay triangle. And then I'm going to place the lid very carefully on top. Now, when I'm lighting my Bunsen burner, I don't wanna do it underneath here because it's really easy to accidentally hit the clay triangle and have it be a bit of a disaster. So I'm gonna use my striker to light this. Oop, too much gas. Perfect, all right. I'm gonna adjust my flame just a little bit because I wanna heat this gently. And I'm gonna place it underneath the crucible and I'm gonna heat this for several minutes until it's, I see that the reaction has come to a completion. Okay? So we'll check back in with it in a little bit. Okay, so our reaction has come to a completion. I let this react for quite a while until all of the metal stopped reacting with the lid on. And then once it appeared that all of the reaction had occurred, so you periodically lift the lid to let some more oxygen in and um, check on the reaction. Once the metal had stopped reacting, um, I removed the crucible lid and continued to heat for another minute to make sure that we have it fully reacted. So let me show you what this looks like now. So inside the crucible, we have sort of this white, crumbly, powdery looking stuff looks pretty good to me. So now it's very hot right now, so I don't wanna put it on my balance until it's had a chance to cool. So we are gonna give it a little while to cool and then we'll come back. Okay, so this is nice and cool now. So I'm gonna actually add a couple of drops of water to this because we wanna decompose any nitrates that might've formed during the reaction. And then we're gonna to have to heat it again. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and heat this again and then I will get back to you. Okay, so I have cooled this down and this is what we've got going on right now. This is what it looks like right at the moment. I've cooled it down, I've got it on the balance. Now I am not gonna record this as my final mass yet. We're gonna heat it a few more times to make sure that this mass doesn't change any. So I'm gonna go ahead and just on a side note, write down this mass and then I'm gonna heat this again and see if it changes. All right, so I've heated this again and my mass did come out kind of different this time. So um, when I first put it on the balance, it was at 32.89. It seems to have gone up, which may just be from air getting in. Uh, but just to be safe, I'm going to reheat it one more time, cool it, and see if the mass changes again. Okay, so I did heat and cool one more time, and the mass came out really close again. So we're going to use our final mass. Um, as 32.90 grams. So to get the mass of the MGXOY compound, we are gonna take this mass, that 32.90, and we're gonna subtract the mass of the crucible and lid, which was 32.48 grams. So that gives me a mass of 0.42 grams of the compound, okay? So this is our MGXOY compound. Okay. Now the next field, it asked me to figure out what is the mass of the oxygen atoms in the compound. So to figure that out, I'm going to do line item five, the mass of the compound minus line item three, the mass of the magnesium. Because if we only made magnesium oxide, then this should be the difference. So I'm going to take that 0.42 and I'm going to subtract out the 0.28 grams of magnesium. That gives me a mass of 0.14 grams of oxygen atoms. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is to find the percent composition of the magnesium in my compound. So I'm going to use the mass of magnesium that we had, which was 0 0.28 grams of magnesium. I'm going to divide that by the mass of my compound, which was 0 0.42 grams of the MGXOY compound, times 100. So 0.28 divided by 0.42 times 100 gives me a percentage of 66.67% magnesium. Okay. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the oxygen. I'm gonna calculate the percent oxygen. So I'm going to take my 0 0.14 grams of oxygen atoms divided by the 0 0.42 grams of the MGXOY compound times 100. So 0.14 divided by 0.42 times 100, that gets me 33.33% oxygen. So basically it was a third oxygen and two thirds magnesium. So now we're going to get the empirical formula of the magnesium oxide compound. Now, for on-level students, you will not have to do this calculation, but I do want you to see sort of how it works because this is how we experimentally do this. My pre-AP students, you will be learning how to do this after we get back from spring break, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my percent composition of magnesium and I'm gonna change that percentage to grams. Okay? Then I'm gonna take that grams of magnesium and I'm gonna change it to moles of magnesium. So I'm gonna put this in my grid and I'm gonna go from grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium. Moles always gets a one, grams always gets molar mass. So I'm gonna to go to the periodic table, find magnesium. It has a molar mass of 24.305. So that's gonna go next to my grams. I'm gonna put 24.305 here. My grams of magnesium cancel, leaving me with moles. So I'm gonna do 66.6, .6, oops, I'm sorry, that's 66.67, I apologize. There we go. 66.67 times one divided by 24.305. And that gets me 
moles of magnesium. I am then gonna repeat this process with the oxygen. So I'm gonna start with the percent composition of oxygen, 33.33. We're gonna change the percentage to grams. And I wanna go from grams of oxygen atoms to moles of oxygen atoms. Moles always gets a one, grams always gets molar mass. If we look at the periodic table, the molar mass for oxygen is 15.999, so we're gonna put that next to our grams. Okay, so we're gonna do 33.33 times one, divided by 15.999, and that gets us 2.08 moles of oxygen atoms. Now this next thing I'm gonna do is a little bit tricky Ricky. So I wanna kinda of try to explain what I'm doing. I want to know the ratio of magnesium to oxygen. So I wanna know basically how many for how many. And since we are in moles, oops, you know what y'all, I apologize. I got the wrong number on this one. I was just looking at it going, I don't think that's right. 66.67 times one divided by 24.305. Yeah, sorry, that's the wrong number. That gets you 2.74 moles of magnesium. I apologize, I think I hit the wrong button in my calculator. All right, so we have this number, we have this number. I want the ratio of magnesium to oxygen. So I'm gonna take the smaller of these two numbers and I'm gonna divide both numbers by that smaller number. So I'm gonna divide these both by 2.08. Now here, obviously 2.08 divided by 2.08, that's gonna be one. Then we have 2.74 divided by 2.08. That gets me 1.32. Now, here's the thing that's a little tricky. We're looking for a whole number here. And we got one here. Here, we're kinda a little bit sort of almost close to a whole number. So we're gonna actually round this down to one. So that's gonna give us a molecular formula, excuse me, an empirical formula of one magnesium for every one oxygen. So our formula would be MgO. Now, why didn't this come out perfectly at one? Many, many reasons, okay? Perhaps when I did the initial experiment, my crucible wasn't clean enough. Perhaps I did not sand off enough of the impurities off of my magnesium. My magnesium's pretty old, so it may have had some impurities in it. Maybe I didn't heat it enough. I heated it three times, but maybe I didn't heat it enough. So there's a good number of reasons why this number didn't come out to be perfectly one, but it's close enough to one that we can assume that this is the correct ratio for our empirical formula. And if we look at what we know from our periodic table, magnesium is in group two, so it's two plus. Oxygen is in group 16, so it's two minus. So when we crisscross that, they cancel out. So it should be MgO based on what we know. But how did we come up with this? Because we were able to experimentally do this, okay? So this came before we knew this. This is actually how we kind of determined what these charges would be, is by figuring out what our empirical formulas are experimentally like this. So I hope that that made some sense to you guys. I hope that you learned something from doing that in terms of how we get to these um, formulas that we use.